Thanks, everyone. Great to see uh, many bargain hunters out here um, shopping around in the battery metal space, um, given the, the current state of the market. Um, fantastic event. Um, great to be presenting again. Um, so Chalice Mining, the usual um, forward-looking statements and disclosures, please uh, take a read of this on our website or on the ASX platform. So, uh, so why Chalice? I think me, most people know the company, um, but we own one of the largest critical minerals deposits here in the Western world, uh, and certainly one of the largest in Western Australia, and we're really unlocking a new mineral province uh, on the Western part of WA. Uh, we've got a strong balance sheet, 112 million in cash, no debt, which means we're in a very, very good position to ride out the current uh, market weakness. Uh, we own 100% of our asset. It's the largest undeveloped palladium resource and one of the largest nickel copper PGE resources in the Western world. Obviously a very, very high profile discovery here in WA. 16 million ounces of contained precious metals, 860,000 tonnes of nickel, 520,000 tonnes of copper and 83,000 tonnes of cobalt. Um, the value equation obviously in the last 12 months here for this project has changed uh, dramatically. Uh, we're now trading at, a, at an EV to resource metric of around about $8 per ounce of metal uh, in the ground. We've spent $180 million drilling out this discovery, uh, obviously doing test work, studies and acquiring the surrounding farmland which, uh, which uh, the deposit sits on. Uh, current enterprise value around 250 to 300 million dollars. So return on investment doesn't look great today, but that provides a very compelling value equation to, to new investors. Commodity prices obviously at cyclical lows. We're looking at anywhere between four and six year low in nickel and palladium prices, and obviously those are the two uh, commodities of, of interest for us. Um, our asset, though, is predicted to be the lowest cost PGE mine in the Western world, second quartile globally. Uh, after those byproduct credits. So we're, we're, we're very competitive, uh, and that's because we have a shallow, open pitable deposit and sulphide mineralogy. Uh, and obviously, being 70 kilometres northeast of Perth, that comes with a fantastic uh, labour force, excellent infrastructure, and the safest mining jurisdiction in the world. Obviously, IRA has changed the game for battery metals players and it effectively necessitates a Western premium on, on Western. Uh, battery metals, uh, and obviously our metals will be fully compliant with that. Our PFS is underway, targeting completion in, in mid-2025, uh, but I guess most focus, uh, and I'll take you through today, is on the high-grade starter case. How can we get this project going with a lower capital cost and uh, really, I guess, increasing the margin? Uh, but in parallel to that, it's worth noting 9,500 square k's of, of surrounding license area. This is a very interesting part of the world because it doesn't only hold the Gonville deposit, uh, it also hosts the, uh, the 40 million ounce Boddington gold mine in the New Newmont portfolio, uh, and the 2.5 million tonne, and I guess the, the world's finest hard rock deposit there uh, for lithium at Greenbushes. So it's a very, very interesting part of uh, Western Australia's geology, very, very poorly understood still, and we've, we're certainly uh, continuing on that, uh, that uh, task to unlock the, the next wave of discoveries in this area. Uh, obviously, the team, the board and management team at Chalice have a track record of doing this. We've also got people that can build large-scale projects uh, as well. Uh, and fantastic to see our top shareholders have effectively stayed the course and riding out the current price weakness. We've effectively got an almost identical register to, um, to what we had uh, 12 months ago. Um, so why palladium? It's not a particularly well understood metal, uh, but it's very relevant at the moment with a slowing battery electric vehicle adoption rate. So hybrid vehicles as well as internal combustion vehicles drive demand for palladium. And hybrids, particularly plug-in hybrids, are the growth story at the moment in the, in the auto space. And that's because they have bigger range, more flexibility. You don't need to be um, tied to charging infrastructure, which is obviously very limited. Uh, and, and a lot of the largest car makers in the world are pivoting away from now pure battery electrics. They're slowing the ramp up of pure battery electrics and they're increasing their number of models uh, in this plug-in hybrid category. Um, so in those hybrids typically have a palladium-based catalytic converter and an NCM or NCA um, battery within them. So very much relevant uh, metals for us. 
Um, palladium is a, is a very uh, interesting um, metal from a de demand side, but more interesting probably because of the supply dynamic. So effectively, the current spot price sits at about the 50th percentile of the cost curve. Um, so what that means is that basically about half of the world's mines are not profitable and cannot maintain production at the current price. So either they all need to shut or the price needs to recover. Um, so this is the cost curve. On the left-hand side, uh, Nornickel, the largest uh, producer of palladium, is in the northern part of Russia. Uh, that they, they have just put out their quarterly uh, guidance uh, for 2024, and they're down 15% uh, year on year in production. So they're not, even they who have negative cash costs can't, can't maintain production of this metal in this environment. Uh, then on the right-hand side there is largely South African uh, operations. So anyone who who's understands the, the dynamic at the moment in South Africa, it's a very, very challenging uh, jurisdiction. Operationally, uh, huge challenges. Politically, South Africa is becoming very aligned to the BRICS countries. Uh, and if you look on the right-hand side there, the fourth quartile of the PG industry needs about 1,600 US dollars per ounce to sustain production. As it says there, the basket price, it, it was 1160 in the red line there. It's now around about 1050 per ounce. So uh, like I said, not a sustainable uh, supply dynamic for this metal. And obviously that means the market could quickly swing to deficit and you could see quick you know, escalation of prices in a very, very rapid manner. Um, so why does that matter today? Um, obviously, the palladium price is at a cyclical low. The grey the gray line there um, shows it's, it's down about 50-odd percent uh, in the last three years. But somewhat counterintuitively to that, vehicle sales and those ICN hybrid vehicle sales are very, very strong. So on the bottom left-hand side there, you can see effectively over the course of 2023, there was a 41 percent growth rate in, in non-battery electric vehicles. So we anticipate that this market is going to have to quickly balance and balance very quickly. Um, and that PG price basket, the palladium and platinum is going to increase in the near term. Uh, other catalysts for, for Chalice, obviously we're running a strategic partnering process. We started that about 10 months ago for Gonville. We're looking at a minority uh, equity interest at the asset level there. Um, those discussions are very much continuing and I guess the longer term participants and those strategic players in the battery value chain are very much there at the moment shopping around because they can see value at, at current prices. Um, obviously as well, the high grade sulphide resource, we're, we're recutting that uh, at the moment. We, we're going to be releasing that in March. That's going to be a totally different uh, version of the resource, probably not, not too much change at the low grade end in terms of the global resource number contained metal, but very different at the high grade end. So we're looking at, at tightening up the resource and really focusing the, the selective mining of the high grades. That study update will be provided in, uh, in the second quarter of this year. Uh, we haven't held up progressing a pre-feasibility study though. Obviously there's lots of scope uh, for this project that can continue irrespective of the scale of the mining operation that we're looking at. Uh, and obviously, you know, we, we're doing lots of exploration in the background as well, um, drilling north of the resource, uh, and we've just completed an RC drill program at the Barra Barra project uh, east of Geraldton as well. Uh, so all those catalysts are laid out here over, over 2024. I think, you know, key here is that Chalice is fully funded uh, for at least the next three years. And that means that, you know, we're really focused on driving long-term value for shareholders when prices inevitably do pick up. Um, we, we will be ready to hit the market and make an FID on this project. The resource, as I mentioned, you know, it's a, it's a very large deposit, very large resource, uh, about 30 million ounces of, of palladium equivalent in the ground. It's all on our farmland that we own. Uh, it's been defined down to 800 metres. It's still open beyond there. We've got evidence of mineralisation going down to at least 1,000 metres below surface. Uh, but like I said, that, as it says in that blue bar there, that's the, that's the area of the grade tonnage curve that we're most interested in and we're actively remodelling at the moment. So what we're aiming for there is a reduction in tonnes but an increase in grade and obviously grade is, is, a, is obviously the key parameter here to that influences project economics. 
Um, so if you have a look at the different styles of mineralization within this deposit, obviously most people focus on the global sort of grades and what's sort of in the ground globally in that 560 million tonnes, but uh, there is some very, very high grades, like order of magnitude higher grades in this deposit near surface. And as evidenced by some of our, you know, uh, drill results over the years, you know, drilling in the first 100 metres, there's a very, very obvious high-grade starter pit operation that we're, we're looking at, uh, and we'll probably move into an underground selective mining uh, approach as well concurrently with that or, or shortly, uh, you know, in, in an early stage in the mine life. So that starter case, like I said, is being modelled. I guess the first thing we needed to do was really get very tight on the resource and really remodel the resource and reinterpret that, that high grade part of the resource. Uh, I think obviously being, a, being a such a large project, you can see here a schematic of, of the, the host intrusion and the resource there. Like I said, the deepest resource block on that page is 800 metres down, but you can see we've drilled you know, down, to, down to very, very uh, extensive depths already. Uh, we've, we've got evidence of very high grades, you know, continuing well beyond the resource, which is fantastic. Obviously, if we get into an underground uh, mining scenario earlier, then we can go very deep very quickly on that sort of grade. Uh, and that's really where the, the material opportunity here to improve economics lies. Obviously, our scoping study of last year was premised only on bulk open pit mining. And so we're pivoting really here to a, a much higher grade approach. With higher grades, it's very important here that higher grades come with higher flotation recoveries. So it's really a, 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 a sort of a, a positive loop. If you can, if you can high grade the deposit, you, you get much easier to recover uh, metals out of the ground as well. In terms of the flow sheet, um, there's a few simplifications that we're looking at here for the starter project. I guess all of what we've talked about in the past has been proven technologies, I guess just applied in a different combination to what has seen in other parts of the world, but very familiar technologies to uh, operations like Telfer, Boddington, uh, Lahir, other refractory gold operations use, use this type of flow sheet fairly routinely. Uh, we're going to simplify this for the starter case and effectively assume that that oxide material is just stockpiled. We're also going to investigate just producing a singular metal concentrate to begin with, a bulk flotation concentrate, and we're also going to investigate producing just two metal concentrates, a copper PGE concentrate as well as a nickel cobalt PGE con for, for sale to smelters. And, and actually at the moment, somewhat perversely, as the nickel price comes down and all our peers in the nickel sulphide space, all those mines are shutting down, the market for sulphide concentrate is getting tighter and tighter. So actually the payabilities and the terms we get on our nickel sulphide concentrate are going up and up over time. So that allows us to potentially defer that hydromet uh, pressure oxidation step and, we, and we've got lots of options here to, to stage this flow sheet over time. Being an exploration conference, obviously this is a part of the, the portfolio that's still very, very exciting for us. I guess that you know, we are ultimately explorers. We, we found Gonville back in early 2020 and we've got a huge amount of ground surrounding this resource that's, uh, that's really still in the early stage. We're drilling at the moment uh, at the northern end of the Julemark complex at the left-hand side of the page there, air core and diamond. Uh, we've got, it's effectively 15 kilometres of untested strike length, and we've confirmed that that same geology exists up there. So really, we're look, really looking for the high-grade deposits of minerals along and where those you know, sulphide minerals um, concentrate along that strike length. So this is still a, a multi-decade type of project, and obviously over time we will progressively add to our resource base. Uh, and outside of that, outside of Julemar, we've got 40 nickel copper PGE as well as copper gold targets. I mentioned obviously Boddington is in our backyard in the West Yorgan. So obviously there's lots of potential here, unrecognised greenstone belts that are getting explored for copper gold uh, for the first time. Uh, and probably the most exciting for us is the area east of Julemar on our northern JV. We've now characterised intrusives that are exactly the same petrographically and geochemically as Gonville. So we've got about 28 of them. We've actually physically mapped about 18 of those and we're re really very excited to go test those uh, with drilling uh, uh, for the first time. So that's a, that's a program definitely to watch. 
Um, so we, we own 100% of our flagship asset. It's a very interesting project, obviously one that's a very high profile project, one that we really think we can pivot the narrative uh, and then the understanding of Gonville here in the next uh, six months. Um, the key value drivers, as I mentioned, that you know prices, our feeling is metals prices can't go down much further from where we are. Um, we're just at, at, a, at a resistance point on the supply curve or on the cost curve. So uh, typically 50th percentile sort of level um, does signal the bottom because so many mines just start shutting down. Um, so our, our sense is uh, there's a recovery in these prices in the near term and we're obviously uh, you know, very levered to that, uh, to that recovery. Uh, and obviously all the activities, like I said, are, are going on uh, in the company. So thank you very much and come and see us at the booth. Thank you.